Here now to give you a glimpse into the future is Ari Popper. Well, good morning. How are you guys? Wow, what a great turnout. All right, it's uh, really a pleasure to be here. I'm super excited to share with you um, some thoughts about the future. Uh, so I'll get right into it. So we're living in what I call the exponential age. Um, companies uh, that take advantage of it, um, we're familiar with them. You know, companies like Uber and Tesla and Nest. Um, and some, unfortunately some companies are on what we call the linear path to doom. And we all recognize some of those companies like Blackberry and Blockbuster and, and Kodak. Um, so the challenge is how do we how do we take advantage of the exponential age? And that's what I'm going to talk about today. So let's take a look at just some Google um, interest data, interest over time. You can look at Amazon Alexa. It looks, that's just simple interest data from Google and you can see it looks very much like an exponential curve, maybe even steeper. Um, Airbnb, same sort of thing. Uh, and Uber, same sort of thing. And there, there are lots of these, I'm, I've, cu I've cut them short. Um, but we talk about disruption a lot, don't we? And you know, literally Uber is causing disruption. People are riding in the streets over Uber. So we live in these amazing times. Um, a lot of it is driven by emerging technologies. Um, we heard Greg talk about the convergence of data and information and technology and, and data. Um, and a lot of that is coming from some of these. Uh, so I've listed out Internet of Things and virtual and augmented reality and Amazon Alexa and robotics and 3D printing and other emerging tech that are being invented today in labs, um, you know, probably across the road. Um, so again, how do, we, how do we leverage these technologies? But let's, let's take a deeper dive into some of the tech. Um, so at so Futures, we work with literally hundreds of published science fiction writers um, and we access their imagination on behalf of our clients. We also write stories with lots of senior executives. So over the past four years, we've literally um, got business people like you guys to write science fiction stories about the future. And what we're doing um, is seeing almost the collective imagination of what executives um, anticipate the future will be. Um, so what I've done for the very first time is I've done a quick kind of an analysis of some of the key themes that we see in, in literally these thousands of stories that um, these executives have been writing. Um, so it gives us a unique look into the future. Now I'm not going to go on stage and say this is predicting where we're going, it's not. Um, but what it is, is it's sort of looking at where we anticipate the future to be. Um, so imagine if all of you wrote science fiction stories about the future and we analyze them, um, we'd look at the big themes and see what's coming out. So um, it's a bit hard to read this chart. It's kind of deliberately that way, but you can see there's different intersections of different technologies. So I'm just going to double click on a few of these now and just look at them. So one of the big themes that comes out is this idea of smart homes or the Internet of Things. Obviously, we're hearing a lot about that. Um, and it all starts with the humble sensor. Um, so every year um, we do tours of CES. Who, show of hands who's been to CES. Yeah, quite a few, maybe I'd say 10%. Um, I recommend you should go, it's pretty amazing. But they have a hall there, it's called the Eureka Hall. And over the past four years since we've been going there, it was basically five tables, then half a hall, and, then, and, and it's on the exponential curve. And, and this past year, um, the Eureka Hall basically had its own sort of convention area. And this is where they showcase the new and the interesting. Um, so it's just growing so quickly, it's fascinating to see. But the sensors, um, that are represented there this year were really interesting because what we're seeing now is industrial grade sensor technology making its way into consumer devices. So one of the cool things we saw at CES this year was a little sensor that babies wear, it's a little booty that they wear and it basically has cured SIDS. Um, kids, you know, are protected now just with these little little micro sensors that they wear. So it's pretty amazing. So IoT starts with these sensors. Another way to think about it is as human beings we have the ability to sense, just like Clark Kent being a human, can sense light and temperature and motion and vibration. But what the sensors are giving us are these superpowers. You know, now we can see non-visible light and radio waves and current. Um, it's really, really interesting. And 
I'm perfectly serious when I say that in the very near future, executives might be able to just put their hands on a table and just feel the health of their company just through amazing sense of technology. It's extending us as human beings, really interesting. Um, so the smart home is one of those themes that just keeps coming up in our stories. Um, and what is it about the smart home that we see? Well, it's a home that's connected and smart, but it knows us as individuals. It seems to anticipate our needs and respond based upon our needs. Um, a lot of what I'm going to talk about is going to touch on privacy and security, so um, we, we're going to presume that there are going to be issues and we're going to deal with them. But what's really interesting about the imagination of executives and what's coming up is this idea that homes will be truly smart. They'll respond to us and they'll know us. Um, Personal assistance is another one that we, that we see a lot of. Um, who's seen the movie Her? Yeah, most of you have seen Her. Um, are we going to fall in love with our um, OS? I don't know, maybe, possibly. Um, but certainly we're going to have personal assistance or personal algorithms, I like to call them bot buddies, that know us. And there's a virtuous circle. So the more we trust it with our data, the better it'll get to know us, and the better the data will be back to us, the better the insights will be back to us. This is coming up in our stories all the time. Little, little personal assistance. And we're starting to see the inklings of this now with Siri and with Amazon's Alexa. Um, and I'll talk a lot more about Alexa soon. So personal assistance is really interesting. Automation and robotics, we've already heard Greg talk about drones and Google's pattern. Um, I think Amazon has a pattern for 3D printing um, goods that you order on the way to you, so as they've been delivered. Do we want a future full of black drones in the sky all the time? I don't know, we need to think about that a bit, but um, we certainly see a lot of drones in our stories. Um, autonomous commuting, um, this is a big one, and who would have thought that self-driving cars would have come up so quickly? I remember when we first heard about this three or four years ago, I was like, wow, that's kind of 15, 20 years away. And even for me, I was surprised. No, there's cars on the road now that are driving themselves. Um, the progress that's been made, made in autonomous vehicles is absolutely staggering. And really, the only thing, the technology solved, the only thing that's stopping it now is regulation. Um, we've got these new immersive realities, uh, very exciting area. Um, so there's a video going around right now that's kind of cool. It's, it's a little dystopian, as sci-fi tends to be, and I'll talk about that a bit. But this is, you know, a grocery store we'd all recognize today. You go grocery shopping. This is a grocery store um, with some kind of augmented reality filter. So the environment is hyperdynamic. It's personally customized to you. It recognizes you. The packaging talks to you and changes based upon the profile of who you are. Um, again, do we want this future? I don't know. But we're seeing a lot of AR type um, narratives that, that come out. And it's really interesting for me, um, having my roots in market research, is well, what does it mean when we can access the information and the data that this is providing? Same thing with smart homes. Um, there's a great technologist named Mickey McManus and he talks about the data exhaust. Um, there's this huge data exhaust that's kind of going out into the atmosphere. Imagine what we can get when we mine it. Again, privacy and security issues aside, well, I'll caveat that once, maybe twice, and then we'll, we'll stop talking about it. But um, this sort of reality is going to produce a lot of data. What does it mean for research? What does it mean for insights? What does it mean for shopping? We can talk more about that. Um, <laughs> you almost don't think forget the knife. Oh, shit. So uh, that, that's a lady, this is you know, real footage, it's not made up obviously. This is a lady with HTC Vive's headset. We have one just diagonally across the road. Um, we're showing some cool tech today next to the Expo Center, so please come in and see it. Um, who has put on an HTC Vive on their head? Eh, great, not bad, maybe a few of you. I recommend you try it, it is absolutely amazing. It is so immersive, um, it's quite mind-blowing. Um, two days ago I was standing on Mars and walking around. I just felt like I was on Mars. This is a really profound technology. We don't fully understand what it means yet. It hacks the brain, that's why you get things like this happening. People running into walls. I know Lieberman have this really cool demo where you walk the plank. Um, you can stand on the side of a mountain. And I can tell you right, right now, no matter what you say to yourself, you will feel like you're in it. So what does this mean? Where does, what does this mean for us as researchers? What does this mean for us as innovators? I'm not quite sure, but it's really interesting. In the next couple of days, we'll talk about it. Um, disintermediation. Here's one that we see a lot with our stories. Um, 
So I've coined the term brand as algorithm. So what does that mean? Well, let's think about it a little bit. If you're, okay, step back. Who has an Amazon Alexa in their home? Great, that's, that's impressive. So if you're dealing with Amazon and you're working with Alexa, you'll know how amazing it is. It's not perfect, but it's pretty damn good. And what Alexa is, is it's a voice portal to Amazon's ecosystem. So what's happening and what we see happening is with Google Home and Amazon Alexa, and I think today Apple will announce that Siri is going to be open to developers. That's amazing. So what that means is when you have a smart agent in your home that knows your shopping behavior, that knows your preferences, and you trust it, you'll start to be able, you'll use it more and more. And what that happens is if marketers and brands are not at that point of contact, they're going to be disintermediated. Um, so this is a great qu quote by this Forrester lady, which I really like, and she's saying a handful of big companies will dominate mobile moments and create distance between brands and their customers, and that's 100% true. There's a battle for the hub going on, Amazon and Google are fighting for it, of course Apple's fighting for it too. And what happens if your brand is in there? So what the brand needs to be is it needs to be an algorithm. It needs to know how to, how to configure its code to be surfaceable and accessible through these ecosystems. Um, and of course we see things that are positive and social and uplifting like the disabilities going away. So this lady um, gave herself a drink for the very first time using her mind. So mind-machine interface is really, really interesting and again, massive progress going on there. Okay, so that's a bunch of tech. I've explained what we're seeing in our stories. It's not predictive, but it's interesting to know what the collective intelligence of executives are saying. So trying to predict where this is going to be in the next five to ten years is so difficult. Um, we can just see the rapid rise of automation and, uh, sorry, self-driving cars and drones and um, VR and AR, just to name a few. But Arthur C. Clarke famously says that in order to make predictions about the future, we have to be so bold and so outrageous that people would laugh at us and laugh us to scorn. Only then would we have a chance of predicting what's really going to happen. And that's absolutely true. So when you look at emerging tech, things like, you know, let's say early days of augmented reality, it's deceptively disappointing. Because as human beings, we look and go, ah, it's never going to take off. But because it's on that exponential curve, it happens a lot quicker than we can. So famous Thomas Friedman quotes, noting all the amazing things that have happened, that happened in six years. Uh, it just kind of blows the mind. And this is already, you know, six years ago. So we have this bias. Stan Ariely says we kind of completely overestimate what's going to happen in the short term and underestimate what's going to happen in the long term. But storytelling, creativity, that's the way to get there. Even Albert Einstein, one of the smartest guys in the world that ever existed, said imagination is more important than knowledge because imagination is open to everything where knowledge is limited to the here and now. So storytelling is super powerful. We hear this all the time in research and insights. If you want people to understand what the big take is away, tell a story. And there's a great study by Ohio State University where they look at um, the differences between people's perceptions of the world and themselves based upon information about an event that was told factually or in a narrative format. And it's a great controlled experiment. Um, and they show that people are more likely to change their belief systems about the world if they told the story. So that for me is super profound. Um, what does that mean for us as people in the information and, and insights business? If you want people to change their beliefs about the world, tell them a story. And the same thing um, applies to innovation and the work that we're doing. You've got to tell stories. Um, so science fiction stories have captured the imagination. It's a super popular um, genre. Eight out of the ten of the top ten movies of all time are sci-fi or fantasy. Um, Avatar, I think, is still number one. Um, and it's an inspirational force. I'm not saying it's a predictive force. We don't have our flying cars yet. But it's certainly very inspirational when you talk to people and geeks who are in technology and astronauts and people who work for NASA, they get into it because of science fiction. So what does it do? And this is the cool thing, and this is what we're doing at Sci Futures, is it's the intersection between technology and people, um, and there you get the narrative. And that's where you can humanize technology and you start to get ideas about the future. Um, I like to say it gives you clarity. So when you're dealing with emerging tech, it's super complex. You don't even have language for it. Um, I just kicked off a project for a big technology client. It literally took us two weeks just to agree on how to talk about the project because the technology was just unfamiliar. 
So it gives you clarity, it gives you connection, human connection. You can create new ideas when you tell stories. You're playing with ideas, you're speculating about where this could be and how it affects people. And of course it gives you context because it's not just the one technology, it's the mashing up of all of them. It's this kind of ecosystem. I'm gonna have to speed up a little bit. Okay, so the best way, in my opinion, to um, get ahead on the exponential curve is to tell stories about the future and play with ideas and get the human side and the connection side. Um, we live in a time where there's some crazy stuff going on and we just need to look at our world. Um, we really don't have a clear narrative of the future. This is from an initiative by Arizona State University called the Hieroglyph Project, where they got a bunch of sci-fi writers together and said, we need to tell positive, uplifting stories about the future. We need to go back to the golden age of sci-fi in the 50s and 60s, where um, science fiction storytelling was inspirational, and aspirational, um, and we really do need that today. So, so Futures, we've just written an anthology of short stories stories, um, the city of the future. Um, we have some copies um, at our booth. Okay, so a couple of case studies and then I'm going to wrap it up. Um, some of you might be aware of the Lowe's stuff that we've done. I'm just going to close the loop on this. Um, Lowe's came to us and said, what's the future of home improvement? We wrote some stories, they shared them with the executives, they got super excited. We brought AR and VR to life for them. Um, it was, this is the original incarnation of the Hollow Room, which is a home improvement simulator. Um, campaign magazine said it's one of the essential VR branded campaigns. This is the existing incarnation. Um, Lowe's are doing incredible work um, in technology uh, through sci-fi prototyping and storytelling. And this is um, the VR evolution of the home improvement simulator. Lowe's are way, way ahead of everyone else. Um, and it won some, some awards. Um, you can tell stories in physical spaces too. This is some of the work that we're doing for Visa right now. The payment space is super interesting because um, there's a lot of disruption going on just like any other category. So for Visa, it's very important to be part of that conversation. Um, so what we've done is we've created for them and built for them physical environments that tell stories. This is a, a smart home where Alexa controls payment and adjusts the home to your needs. Uh, this is Future Store, where you can literally take stuff off the shelf and just walk out um, using RFID. Um, this is a car that we put into Visa, basically showing the future payment in a car. And the car is a payment device using blockchain. Really interesting demo too. And commuting. Um, in the corner there, that's a biometric ATM where you can text the ATM before you get there. It recognizes you and your money gets um, spied out. So you can tell these amazing stories. So the last thing I'm going to leave you with is um, some work that we're doing for Alexa. We're um, one of the official developers for, for Amazon and Alexa. Um, and it's an amazing tool just at the beginning. Um, they're selling more Alexas now than Kindles. Um, and it just took Amazon by storm. They even admit it themselves. Um, so this is uh, true. I'll let you guys read that. Amazon Echo is magical. It's also turning my kids into assholes. It's, so we're doing this massive social experiment on our children right now. We have this kind of adult-like figure, AI, in the home. Kids are talking to it and interacting with it, but we aren't really thinking about the consequences, which is fine. Um, but um, what, what I love about sci-fi is you kind of explore these unintended consequences. And there are unintended consequences in having Alexa in a home, particularly if you have children. And those unintended consequences are children treat her like a slave. They swear at her, they abuse her, and parents are basically fed up. And we have a lot of kids in our office who have, um, sorry, a lot of people in our office who have kids who kind of yell at Alexa too. Um, so we wrote some stories and we came up with some interesting insights about how to develop for Alexa to help parenting and think of it as almost like a digital Mary Poppins. Um, and how many of you have um, kids in the home? Okay, lots of you. Do you have those star charts that you put up where kids take out the trash and they get a star and clean their room, they get three stars and help with washing the dishes? Um, so we've programmed Alexa to do that. And not only that, we've um, taught her to be um, to say what's the magic word, and I didn't hear thank you, and to become a more positive role model. So you can have a lot of fun today with storytelling. Um, you can develop very quickly based upon the insights that you get. Um, and Amazon's super exciting. Um, 
So I think that's all I have. Um, I know I had to go very quickly, so hopefully that sunk in. Um, but I'll just leave you guys with this slide. Um, if what you're seeing, to, if what you're doing is not seen by someone, a people of science fiction, it's probably not transformative enough. So thanks very much. Enjoy the conference. We're around today. Appreciate the time. Thank you.